I play Minecraft Bedrock Edition, which on paper sounds like an amazing game where you can play with your friends on any device. But in reality, it's a pretty buggy mess. I'll be giving you a hundred reasons Bedrock Edition sucks. Not because I hate the game, but because talking about these things hopefully brings attention to them so they actually get changed. Which brings me to reason number one, their updates. Every time Bedrock Edition updates, you're essentially gambling whether or not it'll completely break the game. Like the most recent update, ended up deleting people's worlds forever. Some of these people worked on their worlds for years just for it to be gone. And the worst part is they put out just stupid updates that fix like the most random specific bugs, but not the giant ones that affect everyone who plays the game. Like the pink glitch. The pink glitch turns everything in Minecraft pink if you've kept the game open long enough. It's been in the game for a long time, and while Mojang has tried and claimed to have fixed it, I've still gotten the bug as recently as a month ago. Now, what causes the pink glitch? Well, that would be Render Dragon, Minecraft Bedrock's rendering engine. I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know much about Render Dragon, but I do know it causes a lot of problems. So while we're on the topic, here's a few of them. There's a bug where it is only raining on your screen, but no one else's. The nether glitch is a glitch that essentially crashes your game. If you try to load into a new dimension or server, you can get stuck in this loading screen purgatory and you have to Alt F4. But my favorite Render Dragon bug is this one. You like tap into the multiverse and just start hallucinating things that aren't there. But then you walk into them and, and you know, they, they go away. At first it was really funny, but now it's like really annoying. Render Dragon also broke texture packs. A lot of custom skies completely broke and are hideous to look at now that Render Dragon's in the game. And it also broke some items within texture packs. Things that looked completely normal before are now gigantic for some reason. Like the snowballs in this pack now take up like half the screen and that's everything i could think of relating to render dragon but while we're on the topic of texture packs on bedrock edition you aren't able to switch texture packs mid game see if you're on java and you get bored of your pack you can just hit escape switch it out and return to the game like nothing happened but on bedrock you have to go back to the menu to change texture packs this gets really tedious and really annoying especially when you look at java and they don't have any problems with doing that and on top of that custom texture packs and skin packs are impossible to get on the console version of the game. On PC or mobile, you can just download a pack and put it directly into your game, but on console, it's not even close to that easy. You need to pay for a third-party app. Yes, you need to pay for an app on the Microsoft Store to use a texture pack. Then you have to go through this super long process every time you want a new pack. I honestly feel bad for console players. Like they, they get done so dirty by Mojang, it's insane. It's like they're the forgotten group of Bedrock players or something. So like we just did for Render Dragon, let's go over all of the cons to playing console. Just like packs, Bedrock Edition makes it extra hard for console players to join servers that aren't on the featured servers list. I don't know how it works now, but when I played console, you essentially needed to hack into the mainframe. You'd put in like a DNS code, then you'd have to like... I don't, I don't even know how to explain it. You had to like change a bunch of settings. And just like PAX, you didn't just do this once. You did this every time you wanted to join a server. Controller players also have a super limited sensitivity. See, on the original console versions of the game, you could turn your sensitivity super high. And while this might be unnecessary, if you could make it work, it really gives you an advantage in things like PvP. But when they made Bedrock, they uh, decided to cap it out at 100, which sounds like a lot, but here's how long it takes a console player to to do a 360. Now the biggest difference between console and every other version of Bedrock Edition is the performance of the game. Consoles obviously can't run games as well as a PC, but in Bedrock's case, it gives console players and mobile players a much larger disadvantage than they already have. One of Bedrock's lesser known features that I didn't even know about until someone told me is that if you have a lower FPS, you will have more input delay. Now I don't really know how to show you this, but like I just said, just ask people who know what they're talking about and they will confirm this to be true. True. And the reason this is a disadvantage for consoles is because most of them, if not all of them, are capped at 60 FPS. So not only do they play on a controller with already worse hardware that already has input delay, but the game is literally set up to be pay to win. So most of the time, to try and maximize their game's performance, players on console or lower end devices will lower their graphics settings. Now there's nothing wrong with doing this, but this is more of a personal gripe. I really hate 
how these lower graphic settings make the game look. I've seen so many smaller Bedrock creators use these settings and it makes the game look actually hideous. Compare this to Java where it's really hard to tell if someone's turned down their settings. Up to this point, I've only talked about bugs in Bedrock Edition. However, there are a lot of features that Java has that we don't. Most of the time we get them very late in comparison to Java and Mojang is still struggling to get Bedrock up to date. And to this day, there's a lot of examples of this. So strap in because I'm going to go through all of them. To start things off, for some reason, Bedrock does not have spectral arrows, which were added to Java in 2016. It's been eight years. Okay, this is sad. And since spectral arrows aren't in the game, we also don't have the glow effect on Bedrock. When you get a potion effect on Java, you can view the extra details by simply opening your inventory. But on Bedrock, they thought it was a good idea to make a whole separate menu for this. There's no hotkeys to manage your inventory on Bedrock. When I play Java, I can just sort certain items into certain slots by using the hotkeys that they correlate with, but on Bedrock, you can only shift click. Shields on Bedrock work like they do on Java, except to activate your shield, you have to crouch instead of right click. I'm still, I, I don't, like why? On Java, you can stack TNT minecarts to make a giant explosion, but on Bedrock, you can't do that, which is super lame for someone like me who likes to make a bunch of traps in their worlds. There's no toggle sprint on Bedrock. I don't know if toggle sprint is in vanilla Java Minecraft, but it's definitely commonplace with things like clients. There's also no toggle sneak unless you play on controller. Water on Bedrock looks way worse than on Java. This is kind of a weird one, but you gotta admit, I'm, I'm cooking. You know, that's, that's a true one. While it is getting added soon, Minecraft Bedrock currently has no option to make a hardcore world. And just for reference, Java got hardcore mode in 2011. On Java, you can use a fishing rod to pull items towards you. And while I don't think I would ever use this, I'm kind of sad it's not on Bedrock. This is another weird one, but on Java, when you complete an advancement, it puts it in the chat. I wish we had this on Bedrock for things like YouTube content especially. You don't really realize how much it can add to a competition until you don't have it. You also can't visualize sound effects on bedrock which is a super cool option to have on java and definitely helps with things like speed running something else that helps with speed running is the f3 menu but as you can guess we don't have this either there's no way to see how much fps i have without downloading something from a third party with this there's also no hotkey to take a screenshot this might be a good thing honestly but sometimes i wish we had it there's also no hotkey for bedrock players to easily switch between game modes we have to type out the command every time if you need to go afk while playing your single player world you can pause your game and know nothing will kill you right well not on bedrock pausing the game doesn't actually pause the game so while you're you're going to the bathroom or something a, a little creeper can come up to you and blow you up there's certain clutches that are only possible on java but not bedrock the best example is dream's notorious boat clutch i lost my mind because one time for a video i tried to hit this clutch for hours and then i realized it isn't even possible on bedrock even if you auto click a hundred cps in speedruns i've seen java players use items like doors to catch their breath well if you try this on bedrock you're just gonna drown for some reason we don't have furnace minecarts i honestly think they just forgot to put this in the game because it's such a random item when you make a super flat world on bedrock there's no villages and while this is probably great for most people for a youtuber like myself it eliminates a lot of possibilities for a super flat survival series or, you know, something like that. Bedrock Edition also doesn't have the debug stick. I would probably never use it if they added it to the game, but I know a lot of builders would, would probably freak out if it was added. Number 39 might be a little controversial, but I wish Bedrock Edition had the updated combat. For servers, it would definitely be worse, but for vanilla survival, the updated combat makes it 10 times more fun. And since we don't have the new combat, we also miss out on a lot of other features. One example is Sweeping Edge. Once again, this doesn't really make sense because it'd be really overpowered if you could just spam click with sweeping edge. So I understand why this isn't in the game. But we also don't have sharpness particles. And I don't think I really have to describe this one, but like PvP does not look great with no sharpness particles. And probably the most annoying thing we miss out on is Java's regeneration. If you eat food on Java, you heal up insanely fast. But on Bedrock, you're lucky if you heal a heart. This on top of 
of something I'll mention later, makes it really annoying to play Bedrock Survival. When Minecraft added the offhand, it quickly became one of the most useful additions to the game. You can put blocks, bows, food, whatever, to make your gameplay much more efficient. Well, you know, on Java, not on Bedrock, of course. There are only five items. Yes, uh, that is right. There is five items you can put in the Bedrock offhand. A shield, rockets, a totem, arrows, and a map. But get this, one of the five items doesn't even work. People normally use rockets in combination with their elytra to give them a boost while gliding. Well, on Bedrock, you can't do that. But instead, you can just kind of hold them and, and look at them while you slowly fall to your death. Hopefully, by this point, you're starting to see why I'm, uh, I get a little confused about some of these things that are in the game. Now, this last one isn't as bad as the other two, but it still doesn't make very much sense. On Java, there's a hotkey to switch an item into your offhand. And as you can guess, we don't have this either. All right, that's it. Those are all of the things that Java has and Bedrock doesn't. I probably still forgot a few, but I feel like that's more than enough. But anyway, we are pretty close to the halfway mark, so now's probably a good time to take a mini break. And while we're at it, make sure you're subscribed. My next video will be 100 things I like about Bedrock. So if you want to see that as soon as possible, subbing would help. And anyway, let's, let's get back to the things that suck about Bedrock. Minecraft Bedrock is best known for its servers. Well, yeah, yeah, for its server, for the, the for that one. Even that Bedrock selection of servers is not the best. There's a lot of sus and like scammy things that take place on Bedrock servers, and even the bigger ones are nothing in comparison to Java. One specific thing I really wish Bedrock had was some form of UHC server. I used to play a ton of UHC when I was a kid, so seeing it get revived in the form of Hoplite was super cool. But unfortunately, Bedrock has nothing like it, and I don't see it having anything like it. It soon. So to try and grow Bedrock servers, Mojang added the Featured Servers page. In theory, this is a great idea, but it causes a few problems of its own. The main one is that Microsoft really sucks at picking good servers to be featured. Some are great, but the majority of them are shameless cash grabs that are borderline unplayable. Some of the featured servers are even behind a paywall. We all remember the infamous Pixel Paradise where you literally needed to pay for a pass in order to play their mini games. The fact that Microsoft allows that to become featured shows where the intentions are. Pixel Paradise is also a great example of a server with a terrible anti-cheat, which is very common on Bedrock. I remember me and my friend Andrew logged onto Mindplex before it shut down, and we were able to spawn in withers and go in creative mode during Bedwars games. We have a theory that they just didn't have an anti-cheat, which is pretty funny considering Mindplex was a featured server. Microsoft also has a chat filter on all multiplayer servers. Having a chat filter is a great thing, because then people can't, like, say weird stuff in the chat. But their filter blocks some confusing words. I specifically remember it blocking the word Obama, which I thought was pretty weird, so I spammed it a bunch of times. They made, like, a politically motivated chat filter or something. The worst part about the chat filter is that it can shadow mute you. If you don't know what shadow muting is, you essentially get blocked from being able to use the chat, but it never tells you that you're muted. And if you've ever played Bedrock, you know this happens all the time. You go days thinking people can see your messages until you learn you're hidden. And the funny part is, the only way to get unshadow muted is to be super wholesome in the chat. I always used to tell people nice shirt after killing them in a game and while we're talking about the chat why is the bedrock chat so ugly why did they feel it needed to move to the top left corner when on every other version it's been towards the bottom left and also why does it need to be so big i can read it perfectly fine without it taking up 30 percent of my screen they also have chat settings which you'd think would be actually helpful but they make almost zero difference and with that we now move into what i like to call Things that might not be true, but Evident P thinks they are. These are Bedrock features that I don't even know if they exist, but I still think they're annoying. And the first example is Bedrock's mob spawning. Entering a cave on Bedrock is miserable. The game spawns as many mobs as it possibly can to swarm you and stop all the fun you're having. Like, this is not normal. This, this is not okay. Killing Endermen on Java looks really easy. It's almost like they want you to kill them. But on Bedrock, after you hit an Enderman, it instantly teleports 
teleports away and sometimes you may never see it again this has happened so many times and i'm trying to get pearls I'll, I'll hit an enderman it teleports away and then it's just like on a vacation or something the ender dragon on bedrock feels way harder than on java once again i have no idea if this is true but the bedrock dragon legit targets you it dashes straight at you and if it's not doing that it'll drop some dragon's breath that shreds through your health same thing with the wither like why is the bedrock wither so strong is there any reason they did this or is it just like a is it like a little prank when they added the new way to swim it felt like a great change since swimming in minecraft was super annoying before just don't tell anyone that it's actually faster to swim the old way bedrock's mining mechanic is also super annoying for some reason you mine blocks faster if you individually click each block versus holding down the button if you haven't realized already bedrock has a lot of features that just don't make sense like why like how did they do that another confusing feature has to do with durability spam clicking your sword while fighting a mob causes it to lose more durability than timing your hits now this would make sense but we still have the old combat this is how you're supposed to fight mobs now the last of the things that might not be true but evan p thinks they are has to do with inviting other people to your world one of the better things about bedrock in my opinion is the ability to play multiplayer for free and to do that you you invite your friends to your world but somehow this feature just doesn't work sometimes just like the reasons before this one i can't really explain how this happens but if you've played bedrock you know what i'm talking about just like how i talked about console players before mobile players also get done dirty by microsoft and while i don't play on mobile i still know of these glitches through many clips i've seen and people i've talked to and a good example of this is mobile's new controls microsoft added new controls to try and help mobile players play the same speed as someone on another platform and for the most part it was great but uh but then they updated the game and completely ruined the new controls i don't exactly know how but legitimately every mobile player i know is complaining about this but the main thing mobile players deal with is glitches and these aren't minor things either these are bugs that are game changing it's crazy to me that some of these exist considering the game is literally made to be played on your phone anyway one glitch is called screen shake it's exactly what it sounds like too sometimes the screen uncontrollably shakes when you move your camera there's also the sense glitch which causes mobile players to randomly snap their head to the sun or to the ground mobile players will also randomly drop the items they're holding or their sprint will stop working seconds after it's activated i seriously feel bad for mobile players like i don't know how you deal with that but anyway now we've made it to the moment you've all been waiting for number 69 so here it is the little dude that sits in the corner of the screen. Why is he there? What what is what purpose is he serving? We can't talk about Bedrock without talking about the marketplace. And as all of you know, there is a lot wrong with it. First things first, a lot of the content on the marketplace is not the best. Sure, there's some good stuff, but the majority of it is just sad. Like, you shouldn't spend your precious mine coins on these maps. That's another thing, too. I don't like mine coins. I think the concept is cool, and it's clearly trying to replicate something like V-Bucks. But the name mine coins sounds so lame and when the things you spend them on are such low quality it causes the mine coins to not be worth very much at all the marketplace has a rating system that is also not very good if people knew about it maybe it could be decent but right now no one really uses it so every map has a super high rating now let's say you want to purchase something on the marketplace well before you do make extra sure that it's the correct thing because once you've clicked that purchase button your precious mine coins are gone forever there's no are you sure option it just instantly spends it once you have bought something there's still a chance that the game will bug and you won't be able to download the thing you just paid for i've gotten this bug so many times and i only recently learned that you need to click this button in your settings to fix it the marketplace doesn't just have maps though it also has emotes but some of these emotes are just worse versions of each other or just stolen from fortnite if you wanted to you could just spend 20 bucks on four versions of the same dance and while i'm on the topic the most annoying thing about bedrock emotes is that each emote has its own quirky little message it'll post in the chat so people can just flood the chat with stupid npc emote speech 
And the same thing happens with skins. Every time someone changes into a new skin, the game feels the need to let everyone know that they've changed skins. Skins on Bedrock are just weird in general, though. Like, why can skins blink? It's like, it's kind of traumatic to just watch your guy blink. I feel like I'm overreacting, but like this, it's, it's pretty disturbing. You can also make your skin shorter or taller on Bedrock. This is also pretty disturbing to me. It's like a creepy pasta or something. But back to the marketplace. It also has skin packs. Yes some people do pay money for Minecraft skins. That is a thing that happens. But even after paying real life money for a Minecraft skin, a lot of them are not able to be used on servers. I remember buying this sick Halloween skin pack when I was a kid, but now I can't use like the majority of the skins when I'm playing a server. The last problem I have with skins is that sometimes it doesn't let you change your skin. I have zero clue why, but like I've said more than enough this video, if you play Bedrock, you know what I'm talking about. And that's all I had for the marketplace. Once again, there's probably more, but there's not enough room in this list for all of it. And I really want to touch on more bedrock bugs. I know I've talked about them a lot, but there's so many that I have to mention more. There's a bug I call ghost bridge, where your blocks just stop placing while you're bridging. Similarly, if you try to pick up your water or lava bucket, it sometimes doesn't actually pick it up, but it makes you think that it did. Redstone on bedrock is also very buggy and does not work like Java. The example I always run into is with piston traps, where instead of the player cleanly falling, they get dragged by the piston. Number 86 is probably the most annoying bedrock feature, because on every other game I've played, not even just Minecraft, every other game, you're perfectly fine if you tab out for a second and, you know, go Google something. But on bedrock, tabbing out causes you to log off whatever server or world you're playing. Mojang, please. I'm begging you, just fix this. I, if you're not gonna fix anything else, fix this, it's so annoying. Why does this happen? All right, okay, this one might be worse, actually. On Java, if you hover your cursor over an item and hit your drop key, it'll drop that item, as, you know, that makes sense. Well, on Bedrock, it drops the item next to it. How did you do that? How, like, that feels harder to get the game to do than... Like, I, you know, I, whatever. Other players' movement looks terrible on Bedrock. Just compare Bedrock to Java here and you'll see what I mean. All right, that's all the bugs and now we're in the home stretch. I only have 12 more things to talk about. And to be honest, none of these fit in with the other groups of problems I have. So I just put them at the end. To kick that off, I gotta bring up Fancy Bubbles, dude. For some reason, there's a setting you can't turn off in the game called Fancy Bubbles. I don't know what it does, but you can't lie. That's, that's pretty spooky. Java edition has mods, but Bedrock doesn't. Instead, we have behavior packs, which try their hardest to replicate mods, but most of the time they just fall short. When I played the legacy console versions of the game, you were able to set custom super flat worlds. And like everything else, Bedrock doesn't allow you to do that. It's a simple feature, but I really wish we had it. When you go in third person, the movement of your character's legs is, um, Concerning. I don't know why they felt the need to change this, but they did, and it's not good. Trying to fight another player in a default bedrock world is exactly like doing the same thing on Java, but just closing your eyes. It's impossible to tell what's happening, and bedrock's buggy movement makes it look like the dude you're fighting is like cheating or something. Going back to the legacy console editions, though, a feature I always loved was being able to exit without saving. It allowed you to combat things like griefers, and it always came in handy if you made some kind of mistake. But when Bedrock was released, they didn't include it. If you want to play an older version of Java Edition, which is a very common thing people do, you can just select it in the launcher and hit play. But as you can guess, this does not exist for Bedrock Edition. We are all forced to play the newest release. Additionally, there's no replay mod for Bedrock, which sucks for someone like me who makes content. It inherently puts you behind in comparison to a Java content creator. View bobbing on Bedrock Edition is super exaggerated. If you just like move around, your hand like flings all over the place. It's not even like attached to your body at all. Bows on bedrock are more like guns. And that sounds like kind of a weird thing to say, but when you shoot a bow on bedrock, there's no arc or like curve or gravity to the arrows. They're more like bullets. They just like fly straight where your cursor is aiming. Normally, if you have a Minecraft pet, they will teleport to you if they get left behind. But on bedrock, if your pet starts 
swimming in some water and you wander off, it will never teleport to you. And it'll live the rest of its life stranded in the ocean. And finally, number 100. People hate on Bedrock Edition way too much. Sure, I did just roast it for like 20 minutes, but there are a lot of great things about the game too. Like I said before, my next video will be about 100 good things in Bedrock Edition, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it, or click the end screen right now if it's already out.